Yeah, Hello know. and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're so glad that you could join us after our wonderful good time on election night. We're back here in the studio, but what a studio. Before we go into that, <laughs> let me introduce our wonderful panel members. Former State Senator Cal Potter, who could not be with us on election night, but now is all rested up and really <laughs> raring to go. He's partying with the governor. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there Sorry. you go. Um, Tom Pineski, mm -hmm. professor at uh, uh, UW Sheboygan in mathematics. Ken Risto, social studies person for the Sheboygan Area School District. I can't even try to get it correct anymore. Coordinate? No, I can't. You're the coordinator of social no, I'm, studies. No, I'm a curriculum and assessment specialist. Curriculum and assessment specialist for... As opposed to a general practitioner. Of the Sheboygan Area School District. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a lawyer here in town. And we're in this beautiful set. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Mm -hmm. Pretty wreath. Christmas tree. It's not quite December 1st yet here at taping time, but in any event, we have uh, lots to talk about and a lovely set on which to do it. So we're very grateful to the folks at uh, TV8 to, for helping us out on that. Before I go any further, though, I wanted to just extend another thank you to Julie Glancy, the county clerk, uh, and all the folks at the administration building. Um, we descended upon them with lots and lots of cables and cameras and TVs and uh, they were very accommodating and I think you said you got good feedback. People were interested to know yep. that the administration building was there and what the county clerk's office is and so although we caused a little turmoil, I think overall uh, it, was a, it was a good experience and we sure had a good, a good time and good Cal couldn't join us but thanks to David Gallinetti from Lakeland College who uh, joined us with his trenchant political commentary. So I thought the four of us just <laughs> did it. That's, Excellent. that's Excellent. close to trench mouth yes. uh, <laughs> or ten dentures. But um, I thought we, we uh, did a relatively good job. And we, we certainly had a good time. And it was a most interesting night. I was up sure until is. the wee hours. And uh, um, the Watching United States Senate races in Tennessee and Idaho and Missouri mm -hmm. and all over the place. So, but and, uh, uh, Virginia. Yeah. yeah. So thanks again, Julie, and the the county for accommodating us. Um, but we're back to not certainly this mundane, is great eggnog. but <laughs> mm. Lake Michigan eggnog. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I thought it was really uh, this first time I was down there election night, and I never really knew or understood the process. And so it was, it was I was really impressed about how serious everybody takes their. Mm. You know, this folks show up with those big boxes of uh, ballots, ballots, and they stand in line patiently. And there's folks down there who are looking at monitors, and it's quite the event. Yeah, quite usually the event. there are two computers out in the clerk's office itself, and and there was only one this time, so that did tend to. Yeah. kind of crowd things up a little bit. But I think by the end of the evening, we had students who had figured out how to do the computers and figure out, you know, which returns were coming in. And again, this was just from Sheboygan County, but, uh, mm -hmm. but it was interesting. Right, right. And uh, I continued to report votes for the League of Women Voters, which is why I'm down there every election, and call into various little, I shouldn't say little, but to cable TV stations and the Wisconsin Election Service. So, so that's fun for me and a little fundraiser for the American Association of University Women. Back to the city of Sheboygan and, oh, the, and the county of Sheboygan. Um, it appears we have a budget for the city of Sheboygan on a 12-2 vote on Monday evening. We're taping after that um, with a with a 0% increase and actually a $0 increase as far as, um, uh, as I understand it, um, uh, a 0% in the, in the levy, uh, but that the budget itself is down 1.14% and um, only two older people voting against it, um, uh, older persons Serta and Vanderweel. Uh, I think it's good stuff. It's a change of pace. Um, usually, uh, municipalities have been good at small increases, but to come in at zero, uh, an actual do zero dollar amount. I mean, so we're not talking about, you know. I asked. I had a slate Bonnie, of hand here. Bonnie is a student out here, and she also works out here. Besides mm -hmm. being an older person, mm -hmm. okay. and I, uh, I was, I knew she voted no. Mm -hmm. So I thought, and I read the newspaper didn't say why why the people voted no. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I kind of asked her, I said, you know, you voted no, why did you vote no? And she 
she thought that next year's budget, if we, this year was zero, next year was going to be a big jump. Ah. Uh, with health care costs going up and all kinds mm. of uh, other expenses, she thought. So I thought we could probably do it in small steps. So okay. she voted no. She didn't vote for the zero increase because she was concerned that next year was going to be a big jump, and she didn't want to vote for a big jump. She would have, mm. she would have supported a, a little increase this year and a little increase next year. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't saying we should cut more. It was just she thought the... the like, the 12 were a little too stringent, I yeah. think. Well, in the, um, I mean, as the mayor pointed out in his multi-faceted uh, presentation, multi-board presentation, um, revenues from the state are absolutely flat. Yeah, and she was concerned about revenues yeah. to that was down. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think that the trend is just doing more with less. I don't know, but that is an interesting perspective. Yeah, because normally you think people vote no because they want to cut it lower. No, she would say, no, I think we need to show a little prudent uh, okay. prudent behavior and do it in small steps and instead of nothing this year and next year, bingo. I did, not watch the, I did not watch the meeting. <laughs> did she say what uh, Silas Vanderwiele's uh, no, no. Uh, rationale was? No, okay. I, did, I didn't see the meeting either. I just asked her, no, I don't know what uh, Silas's uh, mm -hmm. rationale was. Mm -hmm. In years past, it usually was a case where you'd build a base because you were afraid that because you'd get a cut in your AIDS, whether your school district or, or a municipal exactly. body, with AIDS being flat or less, uh, that's less of an incentive. So right. coming in with a flatter budget, it doesn't have the repercussion on the AIDS side for the next year, next year that yeah. it used to have. Well, I remember when I was on the school board, it was we were considered to be downright financially irresponsible if we didn't if we didn't increase to the, base. The, the, the base because sure. that was how the, the state was, was uh, awarding, uh, uh, awarding uh, its uh, aid. So, and she which is she not... Yeah, in the state, you know, in the case of public financing for education, it's a, you know, for every one dollar you pony up, the state ponies up about two or three? Right. About yeah. something like two and a half? Well, so you're right, there's an incentive to um, spend the max. Spend spend to the within the cap limit, right? Yeah, you know, which yeah. is easy enough to do. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is. So the police department, the fire department, and public works they'll they according to the past budget will get along with the same budget that they had this year. Well, which actually, is a cut. Chief Kirk said they right. had a cut of five hundred thirty-four thousand yeah. um, dollars, yeah. and uh, Alderman Berg actually uh, Eldenburg. Uh, introduced an amendment uh, to uh, increase the, the uh, police department budget only by 158000 so it could hire two more officers. Um, I understand that was a long debate, uh, over an hour, but uh, eventually failed on an eight to six uh, vote. Um, uh, Alderman sure. Boren apparently said, you know, if, to the police, if you're only paying 2.5% of your premiums, toward the cost of your health insurance premiums. If you paid a little bit more, you'd have that money. And um, I don't know. It's yeah, that, I think that was, that's, I heard the same <clears throat> argument that uh, maybe the, the uh, protective services ought to pay a little more towards their health insurance costs. Yeah. And that's happening in all cities. Well, the I know this. are growing tight. Yeah. Well, I know in the school district now, I don't know now when I left, Administrators were paying 5%, and I think there was a push to, to increase that percentage. What is it for teachers now? Do you know? I really don't look at When I was single, I was paying absolutely nothing okay. for my health insurance. Uh, I don't know if that's the case today. I really, to be honest, uh, my spouse and my stepdaughter are uh, on the family plan, and I'd have to look at how much I contribute. I really, to be honest, I really don't look. It's just the cost of doing business. Okay. You know, the thing about the thing about that is is that associate well unions, associations, whatever you want to call these teachers' organizations that collectively bargain, um, they know going in that generally, as you said, the package can't be more than three point eight percent under the QEO. So the question is, when you start deciding how much money you want to give your employees versus how much money do you want to put in benefits, and the association makes the Generally, generally, because the leadership of the association tends to be the older members, they're much more interested in maintaining the benefits, putting the money into that pile, if you will, and live with um, 
you know, reduced increases in, in their salaries. I think last year in the last collective bargaining agreement, it's something like of the 3.8, I think one and a half percent of it went to increases in salaries, which doesn't keep you, you know, mm -hmm. up with inflation. So in real terms, those cells are losing money, but you're maintaining your health, you're maintaining a, a fairly uh, attractive health care benefits. There's no question about yeah. that. Yeah. So from that point of view, you're saying we, you make the conscious bargaining position that you, you want to maintain your health care under the current status quo kind of conditions and you'll live with less money. Although this, um, the school district has always um, offered, and the, at least since I've been paying attention, more than the QEO amount. The, I mean, the, the, the teacher packages typically come in about, you know, between 3.8 and 4.2 percent. Yeah, I, I think so. the last collective, I think in the last contract it was right around three and eight, three nine, something like that, mm -hmm. something along those lines. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of odd, you know, when you, when you look at the cells, um, I found an old teacher contract from 1969 in my file someplace, not me, I didn't start that early, but <laughs> I actually indexed it for inflation and I found that the teachers in real terms are getting paid more in 1969 than they are now. You adjust for inflation in terms of the salary schedules. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, what happens is teachers move cells as they get more education and they have more years, and that's how they really get their real increases. So cells kind of being time. equal to like rungs right. on a ladder. Yeah, to put Except a little you bit, move the ladder over. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in, in, in other words, a starting teacher, say, first-year teacher with a bachelor's degree, was making more money in Sheboygan in 1969 than they are now, which is really pretty surprising. I thought there was a really increase in real terms. But it actually is not when you adjust for inflation. But the, so, the, so the strategy has been to more or less take a hit, if you will, on salaries a little bit and live with uh, some pretty attractive health care benefits. Okay. There's no question about that. Well, I do think and that... And there's a lot of people, what people ought to really understand is that um, a lot of employers in the private sector are pushing their people into the public sector. You bet. The Sheboygan Area School District covers a heck of a lot of people um, in this county. Uh, there used to be an agreement among the big employers that they wouldn't do that, and quite frankly, uh, Kohler broke that accord uh, some year, a couple of years ago, and they basically have been really encouraging their people to go to other sources of health care. Right. Oh yes, and it wasn't uh, very well liked among the superintendents and the other CEOs across the uh, across the county. What was interesting to me always when I was on the school board, and there are nine of us sitting around the table, and I think seven of us um, had connections in one way or another, either through work or through spouses who worked yeah. to the Wisconsin retirement system. Yeah. Um, it, it, not, not health insurance, but uh, uh, you know, there's a, people whose spouses either worked in the school district or in <clears throat> the police department who um, were circuit court judges, uh, you know, it, it was just an interesting, uh, the, the, the reach of the Wisconsin retirement system, not health insurance, but the retirement system was pretty broad. And uh, so I am, um, yeah, I, I think that it's, the tentacles go out. Mm -hmm. So, but I think it's interesting that the city actually Mayor mm -hmm. Perez actually did what he said he was going to do, and the and the council supported him. And uh, and as we, as he always points out bitterly, um, don't blame me for your entire <laughs> tax bill. The city bill is um, uh, if you're paying two thousand three hundred forty in property taxes on a hundred thousand dollar house, eight hundred forty two of that goes to the city. Mm -hmm. um, the rest is divided up uh, between or among the county and the school district and the. Uh, and the uh, and LTC. LTC. So, uh, so interesting stuff. And it appears the uh, police station is on track. Uh, soon the plans will be uh, revealed. I don't know at what level, if it's a $9 million or That's a 13? That's what the press article said. It, okay. At the $9 million nine, level? Yeah. Okay. With a, the uh, garage facility will be a steel structure, 20,000 square feet, I believe. So they're it pared down apparently on the bricks and mortar part of it into something less palatious, I guess, for the vehicles. 
So Palacious. Be, it's it's <laughs> going to be interesting to see what it looks like. It's a Quonset hut. It's steroids is what it is. <laughs> Probably. Just a little bit better than a Quonset hut. Uh, well, I, we can get the school kids to decorate it, and it's going to be cool. I just yeah. uh, I think that We should have just taken that uh, green building that was along the river that we and just moved. Moved. <laughs> moved it. Yeah. And that would have been that. We could have saved even more money. It was already it, decorated on the east and the yeah. west end. Sure. And it is nice to have that building. And this is off topic, but it's nice to have that building gone and yes. actually to have that open space which will not be there long but mm -hmm. uh, um, it's a great view just driving up the driving down the, right. the past the armory and just looking out across the river the little uh, cinder nice block view. or cell block little building is is that that's currently empty right it's, it's still standing that was just east of there Oh, right, that was like a dive uh, yeah. store. Yeah, I think store. that's empty now, too. I, I think it, that building's time is, is coming fairly soon, unless they're going to turn it into a boutique or something. But. No, I, I don't know, I presume. Yeah. I mean, they're cramming a lot of stuff into that small area, mm -hmm. and one could argue that that peninsula, bless its heart. Um, so what's going there? Is uh, complex? Oh, uh, condos. 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 Wow, it's yeah. four stories, I'm thinking. Okay. Three or four stories, and I mean it looks nice. Um, at the Optenberg Ironworks former site, Some more which has now been Condos completely. Condos are going down there. That's another place that's leveled. Yeah, yeah. that looks very nice. There's a huge mound of something <laughs> yes. sitting on it. I don't yeah. know what that is. That's fill or what is I don't. I, that's the remains of the demolition. It's I think it's the removed. remains of the demolition. All right. That, that whole. I suspect that whole wow. area. This is off topic again. When those. The condos get built there, the property values are going to go up, more houses will get bought. That whole area on the south side is probably going to become uh, more, could, could more valuable. Could yes. gentrify. Part yeah. of the problem, I think, is that uh, Sheboygan, it's not a problem, but Sheboygan Paper Box, I think, has made a clear determination to stay in that area. And um, the car dealership is out there now, and I don't know if Paper Box is going to go to the south mm. or not. And um, I'm getting okay. a nod from uh, our fact checker that that is the case. And, uh, <laughs> um, the word on the street is? <laughs> <laughs> the word behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> These guys just serve multiple roles here. We just love it. And um, uh, it's a fairly tough neighborhood, though. And I mean, it would be interesting to see how it does gentrify out because the housing stock there, except for my mother-in-law's house, is, um, is a little rough. Mm -hmm. And that area has always been a good democratic area, you know, for, for votes, but, uh, but... Uh, Got a nice school there now, Longfellow. That's nice. true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but uh, in any event... Uh, and Where on, were we? Yeah. On the Donahue group, <laughs> we're never off, off topic. topic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's good to know. The um, tax base is expanding. Well, that's it. I'm amazed at the amount of. Like, I'll head back. Where, I'm amazed at the amount of condominium sure. development. Well, the rice is, building is in the rice building. I'm, yeah, I'm looking straight th right yeah. through it now. There's much yeah. left. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah, they've got it right down to the girders and the flooring. And mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just amazed at the amount of, uh, of condo stock um, that yeah. we're going to be having. And, and these and are not cheap sustainable. places. Yeah. Not yeah. cheap places. In fact, the apartment building that's right in that corner of. Um, of Lakeshore Drive and, and Indiana Avenue. It used to be an apartment complex and they've completely renovated that and that's condominiums as well, just east of Arabella's. So well, I'm, I'm sure they've I'm done amazed. a demographic analysis. Yeah. You know, the post-war baby boom is, is mm -hmm. starting to retire wow. and as a result, you're going to see folks who don't want to dr drive far and being downtown. And why is would you a restaurant? I can ride by the bridge. Right. Is yeah. that mm -hmm. what we're going to get to? Yeah. yeah. But it's going to be a like Highland like house. Yeah, this sounds like a, the coffee clutch around my mother-in-law's table. Yeah, and so Yeah, and so yeah, now. Let's go in here. I'm surprised though, how many people really don't know what's, uh, they know they see construction going on, but they're really not quite sure what sure. it all, what it is sure. all about. Sure, I had a couple of people who thought they were just, that Optenberg was just rebuilding and they were going to, it's really? a bit yeah. different building, a newer building. Yeah, boy, that was oh. one tough, uh, one tough looking uh, yep. factory site there, so. It was a foundry. Yeah, well, it's too bad that it went under because it was owner worker owned there for at least for a, a short while, sure. period of time, and yep. so it's kind of sad to see its demise. But the police station is finally going ahead, and um, so we'll see how that uh, that works out. I just wanted to spend a, a little bit of time talking about just in terms of election results, and we'll be talking about state issues and maybe even hit on a few national uh, topics in our next episode, but. Um, 
Sheboygan County again uh, comes out as being very, uh, very conservative. Um, and uh, Cal, and, and, and here's what I'm talking about, is that um, Doyle lost the county, mm -hmm. uh, and by a lot. I mean, the, this was not a close vote at all. I think it was a 55-45 split with, with Green. Um, uh, as I pointed out on election night, it appears that Kathleen Falk got even fewer votes in Oostburg and Cedar Grove than I did, <laughs> which is really a tiny, tiny, I think she got 15% of the vote in mm -hmm. Cedar Grove and, and Oostburg, and she probably was counting on 20%, I don't know. Um, uh, the marriage amendment was 70-30. Uh, in Sheboygan County and statewide was about 5840 quick 5842 42. um, and it's it, okay it, to be conservative yeah, the, <laughs> and we're growing <laughs> but the county and the county I think has always been the ruler has Republican been strongly Democrat, yeah, Republican, Republican. Right. Yeah. but and it that's where a lot of the trending. growth has been the city has not okay. grown tremendously but the rural area has and so I think it somewhat reflects that. Plus some of the issues that have dominated Republican politics uh, are ones that were raised this time, the, the gay issue, uh, abortion. Um, so as a result, I think Wisconsin or Sheboygan County with uh, some of the mainline conservative uh, religious groups that we have here, I think it reflects that movement mm -hmm. into the Republican camp that's occurred over the last uh, 10 years or so. A couple of weeks ago, Newsweek did a, a cover story on the rise of, of the, if one wants to call it the Christian right, or whatever name you want to give it. And they had a map of the United States, and it was the Census Bureau broken down mm -hmm. by counties, yes, and it was color. Did you yeah. see that? Yes. And I was looking real carefully at Sheboygan County. If you look really carefully and squint, you can see it. it and the color, uh, so if I remember, was something like a 30% increase in the last 10 years in the number of people in Sheboygan County who call themselves evangelical. It was a mm -hmm. some sort of really large number. Yes. Um, wow. Oh, I did. And I was, and I, and I, we, I remember us talking about that on election night that the, the county had gotten, you know, in some respects, politically more conservative. And I was starting to wonder if there was a connection between those two, especially when you can rally those types of people around issues toward a particular party. Um, well, there are a number of things that have happened in society. Um, Sheboygan County at one time, particularly in the 60s, after the Kohler strike, was very much uh, a labor town. Mm -hmm. And uh, organized labor, the zenith of organized labor, uh, was about 1968, when about 39% of the workforce was unionized. Uh, today, it's about 16%, the majority of which are AFSCME and teacher unions. Exactly. So the private sector unionization, which which used to have a lot of political clout at one time, uh, dictating sort of endorsed candidates, particularly Democrats, um, has, has hit the skids. Uh, the rise has been NRA and abortion and gay rights and evangelicals and mm -hmm. other groups have taken uh, place of that uh, block issue-oriented type of voting. And I think Sheboygan County sort of pro uh, projects that uh, with its strong conservative religious groups. Yeah. Even many of your mainline groups are on some of the social issues uh, are very conservative. Well, what about with the, you know, the condos going up, doesn't that sort of indicate that there's people with wealth who, uh, who are looking to, to move to another place or, you know, even just people who live in the city or the county, that they're looking to leave their home and they, over, over the years, have gotten a little wealth and now want to move into a nice, more comfortable place with not much maintenance? Mm -hmm. Although I think that demographic isn't necessarily religious conservative. No, that's not religious. And it's just well, wealth. If you know, yeah. you tend to be a little more conservative when you have a little more money. Mm -hmm. But it is true, you know, the way the city has expanded, or where the town of Wilson has expanded, or the town of Sheboygan has expanded in these, you know, vast, you know, tracts of housing. It's not yeah. low and middle income, middle housing, middle income housing mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. So even though the rural area has always been conservative, yeah. you've got a lot more people sitting on that old farmland now living in, in McMansions. And, and you know, yeah. you could drive through my subdivision and it's, it's probably a little above median income housing for Sheboygan County. And you didn't see too many Aulic uh, lawn signs. Uh, you didn't see too many, you know, re-elect Governor Doyle signs. And so I think you're right. I think between the demise of 
mass production jobs in, in the county and and the rise of these, you know, they would, anywhere else they'd be called bedroom suburbs. They're, just, they're so close to the city, we don't call them that. Um, you know, yeah, I, and I think the rise would be, in, you know, very sure popular. Sheboygan County has changed, yeah. even though it hasn't grown mm -hmm. tremendously in population. It has changed. Yeah. 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 And I, um, but I keep thinking even people moving up from Milwaukee into the Cedar Grove and Oostburg area would be, not so religiously conservative, um, but, but politically. If but you look politically. at the, fact, the yeah. strongholds of the Republican Party are, are Zaki, mm -hmm. Washington, oh, you Waukesha bet. counties. You bet. And, and you've had a tremendous change in the mentality of people over the last 20, 25 years, you know, whether some people would celebrate it and some people would say not. But you've got a large number of people who it's, it's, their mentality is pretty much, you know, every man or every woman for himself. Yeah. And when you live in a suburb, you don't really need a lot of social programs, and you don't really need a whole lot of police protection, and you don't really need a whole, you know, fire protection's nice to have. And you don't mind, you know, maybe somebody picks up my garbage or I hire somebody to pick up my, mm -hmm. the need for government, and you don't need a public park because you're in the deck in the backyard, and you don't really need public <laughs> parks because you're going to the private tennis courts that you, you know, there really isn't a, a perceived understanding that the functions of government are something I really want to pay for, and I can probably get by with a lot less government services. And I think there's an attitude so. of, of individual responsibility towards each other has changed, too. I think the attitude of the 1960s and the Great Society and, and Kennedy Johnson years, um, today uh, there's a lot, I think it's reflective in some of the scandals we've had with Enron and so on, is yeah. I've got mine, if you don't have yours, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you grab yours and yeah. get it any way you can? Not so much whether your, your wealth is obscene and, and what you're doing to your employers and their retirement fund is a crime. I don't, there's a lot less outrage over some of that activity and I think some of it's just a reflection of society of, of me first and uh, I've got mine and you get yours and we'll all be happy but get out there and grab what you can. Well, that, so that just, uh, just to bring it back a little bit, um, Terry Van Akron won 72% of the vote against Job Jose. <clears throat> I think the Jose name in this area tends to, people just don't take you seriously whether or not you know, Job should have been taken seriously or not. He certainly hurt himself, I think, with just some fairly extreme ads and, and, and so forth that I think in general didn't play well with the populace. But does Terry Van Akron, if he has a strong Republican opponent, does he have trouble even in the city? I mean, I just wonder. He's been gifted with yep. some fairly easy opponents. Hmm. and um, He's I mean, got big trouble. I just wonder. I would be very nervous, and I'd be very careful about votes, and, and I would hope that the governor, he better hope that the governor is able to solve some of the budget problems, which are enormous, uh, without hurting constituents too much. I don't know how he does that, but um, like I said, you know, two elections ago, when we talked about this before, you know, he had a, a very vigorous, young, thoughtful uh, Kurt Zempel, who was only, it was a newcomer, and that was a pretty tight race for Sheboygan, and mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think, you know, Job Jose made some comments, you know, the radio ad plus the, you know, you, know you, you can't run on a family values and talk about the, you know, your opponent being a veto whore. It just doesn't, doesn't there's a little cognitive dissonance with that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know a lot of people who all of a sudden paid attention, like, who's this guy? Yeah. What's he all about? Well, on that happy note, we'll wrap up and there'll always be more to talk about in Sheboygan. Thanks for joining us.